Finding a monitor that can do everything you can and be wallet friendly is tough. Introducing the Prism Plus XQ340 Pro, a 34 inch quad high def ultra wide with quantum dot technology, a tight 1500R curve, 144Hz refresh rate and one millisecond response time will surely immerse you. Those QLEDs push color to a staggering 140% sRGB and 103% DCI P3 color gamut volume, including HDR capabilities. This monitor packs a ton of high end specs, but comes in at a low price. Let's get into it. G'day, I'm Cam, and as I've said, this is the XQ340 Pro by Prism Plus. Now, you may not have heard of them before. I sure hadn't until they reached out for this review. They're a Singapore-based company, and apparently number one monitors over there. They now started shipping to Australia, and they do a direct-to-customer model, keeping the costs down low. This monitor is incredible for the price. I'm talking gaming, productivity, color accuracy, even just its build quality. I've been truly surprised with how much I've enjoyed using this monitor over the past couple of months. So in this video, I'm gonna go over why I think it's a good buy, as well as give you some proper test results so you can make a decision for yourself. It's important to note how it arrived given it is a direct to customer product. Removing the bag marked fragile and you find there's plenty of bubble wrap. In the box we get a manual, display port cable, power cable, VESA standoff screws, and three little screws. First look at the stand and we can see a spring-loaded height adjustment and a solid metal base. Seriously, it's solid round metal legs and the height part is just rigid plastic. A typical screw with thumb lever on the base joins the two together. Now tip for new monitors, cut the packaging so you can easily mount the stand whilst it's in the box. Removing the rear adapter and we can see those 75mm VESA mounts. So if you want to use a monitor arm, go ahead. Now those three screws in the packet are for this. It's actually nice to have a screw on the top. There's no way it's going to pull off unless it literally sheared the entire bolt off. Hello. So that's good. Eh? Yeah. Seems legit. Imagine if it fell. Ooh. Whoa, that's... That's a curve. Look at that. Now, as you can see, the first thing I noticed was the insane 1500R curve. So let's talk about the specs. The XQ340 Pro is a 34 inch ultra wide with a resolution of 3440 by 1440p, giving it a 21 by nine aspect ratio. Kind of like you've taken a 4K monitor and squished it down or a quad high def and stretched it out. On the back, you're gonna find two HDMI 2.0 ports, two DisplayPort 1.4s, an audio out and power. There's no USB and no speakers. You could plug speakers or headphones into the monitor if it was set as your audio output device. And since there is no USB pass through, I typically just gaffer tape a hub to the back. This is no real big deal and this will probably keep those costs down low. There is a bezel thickness of 11 mil on the side and just under 10 mil on top. Now the stand is sturdy. Those cold to touch solid metal rod feet are awesome. You got 15 degree of horizontal swivel, positive five and negative 15 degree tilt and hundred mil of vertical lift. Now the choice of plastics, it's quite nice. It's quite durable feeling and I don't think it's going to scratch easily. It's definitely going to stand the test of time. So before we talk gaming, let's talk color because the quantum dot LED panel is what makes it stand out from a typical TN panel. Now there's three main things to consider. Viewing angles, local dimming and color accuracy. It's rated for 178 degree vertical and horizontal viewing angles, which means you can sit side on and colors will appear the same as sitting in front. This is drastically different from a typical TN panel. I was truly shocked when I ran a local dimming zone test as I've never seen a QLED panel before. The white dot moves around and you can't see banks of backlights turning on and off. I cranked it all the way to 100% brightness and I still can't see any local zone, so there may just not be any dimming happening here. And this is one of the benefits of QLED, as there's a diffusion layer trying to block some of the backlight LEDs from coming through. And if you run at 100% on pure black, you will see some edge glow. Down at about 30%, which is around 120 nits calibrated, the bleed's not noticeable, at least to my eyes. Now let's talk color accuracy because uh, it's not bad. It's graded for 140% sRGB coverage and 103% DCI P3 color gamut coverage with a contrast ratio of 3000 to one. Those are gamut volume numbers, which are awesome for enjoying content such as gaming and movies. But if you're creating content and editing, the vital numbers are color coverage. I calibrated the monitor three times over a couple of weeks using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, and here are the results. Now that's pretty impressive color accuracy for a monitor that has this resolution and refresh rate at this price range. 
However, out of the box, there's a noticeable magenta shift and you can see this present in many online photos and reviews on their site as well. The adjustments are stored against the input on the monitor. So I had to redo them for HDMI on my wife's MacBook Pro. Now that's a kind of useful feature because say if you've got an Xbox plugged into the HDMI port, you could shift its RGB values to different ones than your PC on say display port. And the picture in picture can also be easily moved around the display depending on the side that you want to have it on. For a monitor that's not designed for color work, I'd be happy to create content with it. Heck, I've edited the past couple of YouTube videos on this. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, there's a lot of pixels. Now, this is super important to think about because if you've got a 1080p or even quad high def monitor at the moment, you could use those multipliers to figure out your rough max FPS from what your system's able to currently obtain. Now, my i9 9900K RTX 2078 gig and 64 gigs of RAM is able to obtain those 140 hertz on most games. Now, I definitely don't run the settings at all, Joe, because that is a high resolution to push. I adjust them to get the sweet spot so I can still run native resolution at 144 hertz, but just take into account your system's performance for this insane level of gaming. Now in the menu settings, you can set HDR auto on, and this way when you launch a game such as The Division 2 with HDR support, it'll automatically override your brightness settings and switch on high dynamic range. Dude, the colors just pop. Like I really enjoy playing games on this screen. Now the only thing that's gonna kill your immersion when gaming is screen tearing, and we all hate it. That's why we have V-Sync, G-Sync, and Adaptive Sync. And this monitor has, well, Adaptive Sync at 144 hertz. Setting the frame rate to around 140 hertz, you can see with no V-Sync, there is tearing present. But with G-Sync compatibility forced on in the NVIDIA menu, we're able to achieve tear-free pendulums. And if you do the test pattern test, you can also see the dramatic difference between G-Sync being on and no V-Sync. Now it's not perfect because if you run it at full screen plus windowed applications, I had desktop environment starting to flicker, like the viewport in uh, DaVinci Resolve would go and flicker strangely. So you have to run it at full screen only in compatibility mode to get the best experience when gaming and using Windows 10 normally. Now, if you're a hardcore gamer, the monitor also has an MPRT, moving picture response time mode. Now this caps the monitor to around 60% brightness. And I presume this is so it's at a point where the pixels have a chance to achieve that one millisecond response time. Now as far as response time, ghosting and other insane tests, I don't have the equipment or high speed cameras capable to do that on this monitor. So you might be able to find someone else online that's able to do that for you. But for just general gaming and enjoying content as I have been using it for, it's been great and I'm sure you will love it too. Now I've been a little bit cheeky and held off the price for the monitor to the very end and it comes in at 599 Australian dollars. That's right, sub 600 bucks for 34 inch ultra wide with quantum dot LEDs, 144 Hertz refresh rate and 3440 by 1440p resolution. Mate. Now, there's a little bit of trickery going on their site. They say the retail is $9.99, uh, but it always has a constant 40% discount due to them not having a brick and mortar store uh, retail overhead. So really the monitor is 600 bucks. Now to keep full transparency between you and I, as I said at the start of the video, Prism Plus sent me this monitor for review. I do get to keep it for free, but they do not pay for a sponsored ad placement for me to say anything specific or review any specific components. They're seeing this video at the same time that you are. If you like this video, thumbs it, thumbs it this way. If you loved it, sub it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.